Okay, so let's continue with problem eight plus twelve. But I've decided we we cannot I cannot discuss all the problems here. So we'll just try to uh, choose which problems to discuss. Yeah. But let's discuss eight plus twelve first. Question here is what is the balance of the unrealized gross profit as of the end of twenty sixteen? Unrealized gross profit is just another name for your deferred gross profit. Okay, and the question is as of 2016, and we have to understand that our 2016 balance will comprise of transactions coming from 2015 and 2016. Okay. And we, in this problem, we, we will just have to be careful because a portion of our 2015 receivable was already defaulted and repossessed. And one effect of repossession is that the corresponding receivable will have to be derecognized. Okay. So let's start with the 2016 component first of our total 2016 DGPN. Uh, installment sales is 1,500,000. And then collections on our 2016 sales is 900,000. So that means there will be remaining 2016 uh, receivable at the end of 2016 in the amount of 600,000. And since we're looking for DGP, we just have to solve the markup on the 600,000 by using the markup rate for our 2016 transactions. The installment sales for 2016 is 1,500,000. The cost of installment sales is 1,050,000. 1,050,000 divided by 1,500,000. This will give you 70% cost ratio. So that means our gross profit rate is the complement, which is 30%. So you multiply 30% with the 600,000 receivable balance for 2016 sales in the amount of 600,000. So you will have 600,000 times 30% that will give you 180,000. Let's move on to the 2015 component of our 2016 DGPN. Sales was 1,200,000 and then 630 was collected last year. And then additional uh, 450 was collected this year. So ordinarily, there will only be a balance of 120, but in 2016, we also will have to recognize the receivable associated with the repossessed uh, merchandise. So here, an installment sale account in 2015 defaulted and the merchandise with fair value of 15,000 was repossessed. The related installment at the date of repossession is 24,000. So we'll have to deduct 24,000 from the remaining 120 and that will give us 96,000 installment receivable for 2015 sales as of the end of 2016 and to get the dgp for this 96,000 we'll just have to multiply this with the markup rate and uh, the markup rate is 720 cost divided by sales of 1,200 so cost ratio is 60 percent that means Markup rate is 40%. 40% times the 96,000 will give you DGP of 2015 sales in the amount of 38,400. You add that with our 180 DGP for 2016 transactions, we will have total of 218,400. Okay. And then for 8-13, okay, this will be the first problem we will have involving trade-in. So for trade-in class, it's basically allowing a customer to pay other than cash. Okay, normally we will ask for down payment and the balance to be paid in installments. Here, we will accept as part of the down payment and non-cash asset, normally similar item which we allow to be traded in. And the main issue here is, and this is what I want you to remember for trade in problems. For trade in problems, you will have to compute for the adjusted sales price. Again, for trade in problems, the most important thing here is that you will have to compute for the adjusted sales price. You need the adjusted sales price to be able to compute for the correct gross profit rate that you should use in computing for realized gross profit. Okay, what do I mean? So, for example, in this problem, uh, the installment sales price was set at 85,000. Okay, 
normally we would expect that the total collections we will get from this transaction would be 85,000 and the cost was 16. But the problem is instead of being paid 85,000 cash throughout the installment term, we will be accepting uh, computer equipment. And then the value, the trading value allowed for this equipment was 30,000. So what does that mean? The 85,000 will be reduced by 30,000, uh, representing the trade-in value allowed for the computer equipment. So what does that mean? The remaining amount that we will be collecting will only just be 55,000, okay? But the problem is the value of this, the value of this computer equipment as to us is not really 30,000, but some other amount, okay? So the amount that we will record in our books for the traded in asset will not be 30,000, okay? It will be its market value uh, at the time of the trade in. And similar to your repossession, you will have to deduct the conditioning cost and you will have to deduct a normal profit margin. But as far as we are concerned, the amount that we will treat as part of our collection should just be the value that we will uh, recognize for the equipment and not the trade-in value allowed. Okay, so you have two ways of looking at this one. Uh, all in all, how much are you getting from the customer? So here, we will expect to receive cash in the amount of 55,000. How did you get 55,000? The sales price of 85 minus the trading value of 30. So we expect to receive 55,000. What else? We expect, uh, we will get the computer equipment, but at what amount? It should only be, in this problem, it should only be 20,000. Okay, so all in all, we would be getting a total of 75,000 only. 55,000 cash and then 20,000 for the value of the equipment that will be entered in our books. Where did we get the 20,000? The selling price after reconditioning is 25,000, okay? And uh, we will have to deduct the reconditioning cost of 1,250 and then deduct also the, deduct also the uh, Normal profit margin. The normal profit margin here is 15%. And 25,000 times 15% will give you 3,750. You deduct the 3,750 and the 1 to 50 from the 25,000, you would get the fair market value or the net realizable value of your uh, traded in asset in the amount of 20,000. Okay, so all in all, the value that we will be getting from this transaction will only be uh, 75,000. And that 75,000 is your adjusted sales price. And again, that's the most important. You will have to recompute. You will have to recompute for the adjusted sales price. We will not be using 85,000. We'll be using 75,000 in the computation of the gross profit rate. So if our adjusted sales price is 75,000, and the cost remains at 60. That means our cost ratio is 80% and our gross profit rate is 20%. Now, what will happen if you did not compute for the adjusted sales price? You just use the 85. Okay, your gross profit, your cost ratio would have been 70.59%. And that means your uh, gross profit rate would be... 29.41% something, okay? And these are not good figures because again, in trade-in problems, you will have to recompute for the adjusted sales price. And you will know that you forgot to compute for the adjusted sales price because normally the rates that you would be getting would not be closed figures, okay? Very important for trade-in problems, compute for the adjusted sales price. And how will we get the adjusted sales price? Determine the total value that you'd actually be getting, the amount of cash that you expect to receive, and the net realizable value of the trading in asset. Okay. 
and an alternative way of getting the alternative way of getting the adjusted sales price is to simply add or deduct the over or under allowance. Okay, what do you mean by over or under allowance? This is the difference between the value allowed to be deducted from the uh, sales price and the value of the asset received. So in this problem, we allowed the sales price to be reduced by 30. Well, the uh, value in exchange of the computer equipment, but the value for the value to us for this equipment is only 20. So you have allowed more than the you have allowed more than what is the value of the computer equipment to us, and the difference is 10,000. And if it's an over allowance, you will have to deduct that from the uh, original sales price. So 85,000 minus the over allowance of 10,000. If it's an under allowance, meaning we have allowed the sales price to be reduced by an amount lesser than the value of the asset we have received, then that's actually a positive thing for us. And you will have to add that to compute the adjusted sales price. Very important for trade in value, trade in problems, you will have to compute for adjusted sales price. Okay, and the question here is the realized gross profit. Okay. So what have we received? We have received the equipment, but at what amount? At what value? Only 20,000. And what else have we received? We have also received a cash of 5,000 uh, with the balance of, with the balance of, to be paid in 10 monthly installments. So the balance was 55. We received cash of 5,000 at the start, and then the balance to be paid in, 10 installments, so meaning there will be additional 10, 5,000 installments. And then, how many 5,000s have we collected aside from the initial 5,000? Since collections is at the end of the month, end of October, end of November, end of December. So we'll have three additional payments. Okay, so the 5,000 on October 1, the 5,000 on October 31, the 5,000 on November 30, and the 5,000 on December 31, a total of 20,000. And then you add the value of the equipment to us, which is 40,000. And uh, multiply that with the markup rate of, uh, how much was the markup rate? It was 20%. So you multiply 40,000 by, 20%, you would get 8,000. So in this problem, our collection would be uh, at 40,000. 20,000 coming from the value of the traded in asset, and then 4,000 coming from the installment payments. Okay, so here, one thing to remember, for trading problems, always compute for the adjusted sales price for you to be able to correctly determine the gross profit rate to be used in computing for your realized gross profit. And then for your for the computation of your realized gross profit in the year of sale, do not, in, do not forget to include the value of the traded in asset as part of your collection. Okay, it's still a form of payment, it's just that the payment is not in cash. Okay. Let's proceed. Uh, I don't think there's anything tricky with uh, problem 14. The answer there would be 500,000. Uh, we start with the 900,000 collection. You remove the interest component of 600 and then you multiply it with the uh, gross profit rate. You would get, uh, you would get a realized gross profit of 200,000 and then you add the interest of 300 then the total amount of revenue would be 500,000. Remember, take note that the question is total revenue and not just uh, realized gross profit. For 8-15, uh, just your gain or loss in repossession, and the answer here would be 2,750.
Okay, I want us to answer 8-16 just to practice the computation of your uh, over or under allowance. Again, for your over or under allowance, you compare the amount allowed to be deducted from the sales price with the net realizable value of the traded asset. Okay, so here, sales automatic voltage regulators costing uh, 700,000. 700 at the price of 1,200. Cardinal audio buys a dozen voltage regulators in installment and trade in and trade in six of its old units at a trade in value of 300 each. Okay, so the trade in value is 300 and there are six of it, so a total of 1,800. That's the trade in value allowed. Gotham Incorporated spends 25 to recondition the old units and sells them for 315. Gothong Incorporated expects a 10% gross profit from the sale of used voltage regulators. How much is the over allowance? Okay. So the selling price of these six traded in items would be 315. Multiply that by six, you would get 1,890. Then the total reconditioning cost for the six units would be 150, which is 25 times six. And then deduct the expected normal profit margin of 189 which is 10% of the total estimated selling price of 1,890. So the total value for the traded in assets as to us would be 1,551. Okay, and then uh, if you deduct that from the traded in value, trade in value, that will give you an over allowance of 249. It's an over allowance because the amount allowed to be deducted from the sales price is greater than the value of the traded in asset to us, okay? And in computing for your adjusted sales price, if it's an over allowance, you will have to deduct that from the from the originally agreed sales price. Over allowance deduct, under allowance uh, add. Over allowance uh, decreases your gross profit rate, under allowance increases your uh, gross profit rate. Over allowance is not desirable for us. Under allowance is desirable. But again, for trade in problems, please compute for the adjusted sales price to correctly determine the amount, the gross profit rate to use in solving for your RGP. Uh, nothing peculiar with problem 17. The answer here would be 23,500. Okay. Uh, question was raised concerning problem 8 18. Uh, so basically, the question here is what is the amount of adjustment in the inventory of repossessed merchandise to the extent of the unrealized gross profit? The confusion is whether or not the amount of adjustment would be net already of everything or just the amount of. Uh, um, just the markup on the uh, repossessed account. And since the question mentions of adjustment of, on the inventory of repossessed merchandise to the extent of the unrealized gross profit, then you ignore the fact that the value of the asset uh, will be different. Just uh, make a, an adjustment for the unrealized gross profit for the repossessed account. And that's why the answer here would be letter D. Uh, and then a uh, very important theory also uh, the answer here for 8-19 would be uh, zero because the method to be used is the cost recovery method. Under the cost recovery method, all collections will be applied first to your, to the recovery of your cost. So you will only start to recognize profit the moment your collections have exceeded the total cost of the item sold, okay? But uh, under the installment sales method, 
we apportion collection between profit and cost recovery. Under the cost recovery method, everything will go first to your cost recovery and you only begin to recognize profit only after collections have exceeded the cost. Okay, but uh, this is not a big point of emphasis under installment sales because under the installment sales method, uh, the recognition of cost and the profit under matching principle is done simultaneously. Okay. Uh, the use of the cost recovery method will be discussed more when we discuss long-term construction contracts. Okay, so the answer for 8-19 is Brad. Uh, for 8-20, and you just ask for net income. Nothing peculiar here. The answer for 8 20 would be 90,625. For 8 21, it's really just a challenge on your on the determination of the balance of your ending installment receivable. Okay. Now you're given with your installment sales, you're given with the manner of collection. Okay. Uh, so for the 2014 sales, 20% 20 is collected in 2014, and another 40% is uh, collect. Another 40% of the balance is collected in 2014. Okay. So for the first year, it's not really 60%. It's 20% plus 40% of the remaining 80%. So the challenge really here for 8-21 would be the uh correct computation of the amount of collection and if you get the collections right then you would get the ending installment receivable right as well and with that you'll be able to get the uh correct dgp as of the end of 2015 and the answer for 8 plus 21 is letter a 97,689. Okay, and you also have to be careful because the markup rate given in this problem is 35%, which is based on cost. Uh, nothing peculiar also for 8 22. The answer there would be 341,250. For 8 23, uh, question here is net income. You will start with the gross profit from the regular sales. Then you will add the realized gross profit from your installment sales. Uh, but you will also have to deduct the loss on repossession. Okay, and again, in loss on repossession, you compare the uh, fair value of the repossessed asset and you compare it with the unrecovered cost. And in this problem, the fair value of the repossessed merchandise is 54000 you do not deduct any more than 4,000, okay? Since this is the fair value, you're already given the fair value of the repossessed merchandise. You will have to deduct the 4,000 if the fair value given is the fair value after, or the selling price after the reconditioning cost. So in this problem, your loss on repossession would be uh, 16,000. That's 54,000 fair value and the unrecovered cost of 70,000, okay? Since the repossessed account is 100,000 and the gross profit rate here is, sorry, the cost ratio here is 70%, which is 630,000 cost divided by installment sales of 900,000. And then uh, always class, do not forget to add your interest income in computing your total revenues, okay? And in your computation of RGP in this problem, do not forget that your collection is not really 312,000. It's 312 minus 24, which will give you 288,000. Okay, multiply that with your gross profit rate of 30%. Your cost, your RGP here would be 86,400. Okay, and one last thing to remember: you have a defaulted account but you did, you were not able to make a repossession. So what do you do? You write off the installment receivable. OK, 
okay and that means you will have to recognize a loss but the 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 peculiar thing here is unlike in what you have already discussed in your intermediate intermediate accounting classes the amount of loss here from the right off will not be the entirety of the receivable but only as to the unrecovered cost okay it will not be the entirety of the receivable because after all you did not recognize the profit on the sale at the point of sale so your loss here will just be the cost component or the cost portion of the installment receivable okay so the installment receivable written off is 44000 and then uh, the cost portion of that would be 70% which is 30800 mm -hmm. taking into account all those things uh, you would get in that income of 151600 uh question was also brought up brought up for 8-24 the big challenge here would be on number one the treatment for trade discount okay so it will not be part of your sales price you will have to deduct the 10 percent and then uh there is also a trade in okay there's an allowance of ten thousand. okay and then uh the issue here is that uh, it says here that a 15% gross profit rate is usual from the sale of secondhand uh, air conditioners. Uh, the current fair value is. Um, after six months of paying, so I have to put it in the payment of December 21. The five units were repossessed, and it would require two two thousand reconditioning cost for each unit before it could be resolved for six thousand. The problem here is in the computation of our gain or loss and repossession. Normally, we would. Uh, we would deduct the normal profit margin um, the normal profit margin in determining the uh, fair value of the asset but what the problem did here is that uh, only the the conditioning cost was uh, deducted no deduction for the 15 percent uh, gross profit margin uh that's why the loss and repossession here uh is only three thousand three hundred sixty okay the fair value is was computed at twenty thousand which was the five units repossessed times the four thousand the four thousand is the six thousand selling price minus the reconditioning cost of two thousand and supposedly it should not just be four thousand because we will have to deduct the uh deduct the normal profit margin of 15 percent and 15 percent of six thousand is 900 times five you will have 900 times five you will have uh four thousand uh five hundred Okay, and so that means the fair value is not really 6,000 minus 2,000 minus 900 times 5. So it's actually just 15,000. The total fair value under uh, for the five repossessed units should only be 15,500 and not. 20,000 and then deduct the uh, unrecovered cost, the unrecovered cost in this problem. If you have correctly computed for the remaining receivable is 16,640, which, which should give us a loss of 1,140, which is not in the choices because again, the suggested answer is 
here is the 300 3,360 loss because no, uh, no deduction for the normal profit margin was made. Okay, uh, under these circumstances, you will be left with no choice but to choose letter B. Okay, but if this was an open-ended problem, then our answer should be 1,140. One possible reason why the answer suggested answer here is 3,360 is because the information concerning the 15% uh, gross profit rate was intended for the traded in asset and not for the repossessed uh, merchandise. Okay, the 15% here would uh, would be for the computation of the fair value of the uh, repossessed merchandise, uh, sorry, traded in asset and not necessarily for the repossessed merchandise. But uh, I am of the opinion that it should be applicable for both. That's why uh, if there were no choices, our answer would be 1,140. Okay. The answer to the second question would be uh, 23,240. The biggest challenge here is the... Uh, determination of the correct balance of the receivable. Okay, the remaining receivable should just be twenty-five thousand six hundred. And many would get that wrong because they will forget to deduct that ten percent. And then uh, and the computation of the twenty percent balance could also be wrong, which would also result in the computation of the wrong monthly installment. So the answer here for number one would be 62617.5. And then for number two would be 96,003. Okay, but uh, I prefer to discuss it as 25. Many would not get this. Uh, how much was collected during the year? Okay, so we're asked for collections. And normally when we are asked for collections, we will compare the beginning installment receivable and the ending installment receivable. Okay, but the most important thing for you to do here is for you to figure out how much was the repossessed accounts. Because if you cannot determine the, the installment accounts that were repossessed, that were recognized because they were defaulted and the possessions were undertaken, the repossession was undertaken, then you will not be able to compute for the correct amount of collection. Okay, so here uh, we can determine the amount of the value of the receivable associated with the repossessed merchandise by adding the loss on the possession of 13500 and the fair value of the repossessed merchandise in the amount of 112500 because as you can recall the gain or loss in repossession is computed by comparing the fair value of the repossessed merchandise and the unrecovered cost of the uh, defaulted receivable so meaning, if you add 112,500 and 113,000, that will give you 126,000. What does that represent? It represents uh, it represents the unrecovered cost, okay, of the defaulted account. And we already know that the defaulted account is 180. Okay, without figuring out the 126,000 unrecovered cost, we will not be able to compute for the cost ratio, which will also prevent us from knowing how much is the gross profit rate. Yeah, and let me correct myself. The issue here is not really on the computation of the uh, defaulted account because it's already given. The issue here is in computing for the unrecovered cost so that we can compute for the cost ratio and the gross profit ratio, okay? So the unrecovered cost related to the defaulted account is 126,000. And since the defaulted account is 180, we know that the cost ratio is 70%. And that means the gross profit rate is 30%.
knowing that the cost ratio is 70%, we can now figure out the amount of installment sales. So if the cost of installment sales is 525, and then you divide that by 70%, that means the installment sales was 750,000. Okay, and then uh, installment sales was 750. Then we just need to compare it with the ending installment receivable so that we will be able to figure out how much then is the collections. And we can get the ending installment receivable by uh, using the ending DGP, which is 108,000. Again, the ending DGP simply represents the markup on your ending installment receivable. Okay, with the 108,000, we will divide this by 30%, which is the gross profit rate. But remember, we would not have known this 30% if we were not able to solve first the unrecovered cost of the defaulted accounts. So that means the ending installment receivable is 360. The initial installment sales was 750, ending installment receivable is 360, you will get 390. But that is not yet the answer. Because aside from collections, your receivables were reduced by the defaulted accounts in the amount of 100. 80. So the collection was not really 390, it was only 210,000. Okay. Uh, 8 26 would be good practice also for trade in problems. Uh, but let me just give you the answer. The answer for letter A is uh, the answer for number one is letter A, and the answer for number two is also letter A. Is 97,490 and 64,200. There's nothing peculiar with 8 27, and you should already know the answer for 8 28 since this was given as an activity to you. At any rate, the answer for 8 27 is Bravo. Uh, and then the answer for 8 28 is 8 27 is bravo and then 8 28 is 930,000 alpha and 775,000 alpha okay. hopefully you'll be able to answer the questions in the examination okay thank you